Moving on to the next example, so we're going to have to find the domain and range from actual equations or from algebraic expressions, which is not too bad. So most of these are going to be a review. So let's start off with this one here. Notice how this is a parabola. It's in vertex form and the vertex is going to be at negative 3 and 5 and it's opening up. So if we draw this, a vertex at negative 3 and 5, so over here, and it's opening upwards. So now let's move into finding the domain and range of this parabola. And if you remember the domain of a regular parabola, there is never a um, restriction on the axis. The axis can be anything. The independent variable can take any value. So it's x is an element of real numbers. Moving on to the range, the range depends on the y value of the vertex and whether the parabola is opening up or down. So the range, the y value can be anything. However, it has to be greater than or equal to a y value of 5 because that represents the minimum point. So y has to be greater than or equal to 5, which is the minimum value of this parabola, the y value of the vertex. Now, is this relation a function? If we run a vertical line through it, we can tell that it is a function. There is no point on the graph where it's going to touch the vertical line twice. And a regular parabola, as we've mentioned many times, is always a function. So the answer is yes. Moving on to part B, we have y is equal to negative 2 to the power of x, and this represents an exponential function. So you may have to go back to grade 11 and review exponential functions a bit, but let's do a little review here. So 2 to the power of x, if there was no negative, would look something like this, if you recall. So this here represents 2 to the power of x. You can make a table of values with a bunch of negative x values and a bunch of positive x values and you would get this sort of shape. Now this negative here means that the exponential function is reflected in the x-axis, right? The a value is negative. So basically all of the positive y values here, they all turn negative. So this relation would look something like this, all right? It's just 2 to the power of x reflected over the x-axis. So this here represents negative 2 to the power of x. Again, you can make a table of values if you want, if you feel more comfortable doing so. Pick a bunch of x values from maybe like negative 100, negative 10, 0, 10, and 100, and you'll see that it takes this shape. And now that we have the graph of y is equal to negative 2 to the power of x, notice how it's easy to find the domain and range. So starting with the domain, there are no restrictions on the x values. Then the x values, there's an infinite amount. So the domain x can be an element of real numbers. There's no restriction on them. Now what about the range? Notice how there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero, meaning that as x is going to negative infinity, the y value is approaching this value of zero, but it never hits it. So the y values can be anything, However, they have to be less than zero, right? Because that represents the horizontal asymptote. And notice how I put here less than zero and not less than or equal to zero, because as I mentioned, it never hits zero. It's just approaching it, approaching it. It's getting closer, but it never touches zero. Now, is this a function or not? Well, if we run a vertical line, through this function here, this negative 2 to the power of x in black, then notice how there are no points where it's touching twice. So it is a function. An exponential function is always a function. It's always going to pass the vertical line test. Moving on to part c, we got x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. And 
By this point, you should recognize that x squared plus y squared is a equation of a circle. So the general equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. So this here we can rewrite as x squared plus y squared is equal to the square root of 16, which is 4 squared. Right? 4 squared is the same as 16. So we can tell that the radius of this circle here is 4. It's just the square root of 16. So if we take that equation and graph it, we have a circle that has a center at the origin and it has a radius of 4. So it's going to have x-intercepts of negative 4 and 4 and then y-intercepts of negative 4 and 4. And now from this graph it's easy to find what the domain and range would be. So let's start off with the domain, the set of values that x can take. x can be anything as long as it's between negative 4 and 4. So the x value can be anything as long as x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than or equal to positive 4. So x can be anything as long as it's between or equal to negative 4 and 4. Now what about the range? Range is the same thing. The y values can be anything as long as they're between negative 4 and positive 4. So y is an element of real numbers but y has to be between negative 4 and positive 4. And it's also inclusive of negative 4 and positive 4 because it does hit those values at the intercepts. Now, is this relation a function or not? Well, let's run a vertical line test through it. No, it's not. It's pretty much failing at all of the points almost. So there are multiple points on this relation that are touching a vertical line. So no, it is not a function. A circle is never a function. It always fails the vertical line test.